Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Welcome to the KISS series, the Keeping It Simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. Each of these sessions are quick introductory sessions into the topic of partitioning, but unlike other tutorials, these are focused on developers. In the world of DevOps, developers now have to understand some of the physical design characteristics of partitioning. In this session, we look at a construct called a bloom filter. When it comes to partitioning pruning, as we saw in the previous video, when we have simple predicates on the partition table, the optimizer can show us in the execution plan that partition pruning will occur. However, we generally don't query tables in a database in isolation. We often query with joins and subqueries, and pruning can occur even with subqueries and joins. Here's an example of my partitioned demo table joined to the non-partition scott.emp table. Can we get some partition pruning benefits even though we're using a join? The execution plan looks a bit odd. It contains part join filter create and part range join filter, and there are some interesting names and partition information that all have a prefix of BF. If we hone in on just those elements, it is quite strange. They do not map to any partition names. They do not map to any partition numbers. So what exactly do they mean? The BF refers to what we call a Bloom filter. A Bloom filter isn't particular to the Oracle database. It is more of an algorithmic facility. If we look at Wikipedia definitions, it says the Bloom filter is a space efficient probabilistic data structure that is used to test whether an element is a member of a set. How does that relate to partitioning and partition pruning? Rather than dive straight into that, I think I'll start with a simple metaphor. Let's say in a post-COVID world, you'd like to go and see a very popular movie. You might phone ahead in advance the cinema to make sure there are seats available. Let's say you want to go see the latest Black Widow movie and the session times are 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. and you're going to phone up in advance to make sure you can get some great seats in the gold class area. Since Black Widow is a very popular movie, the most likely response you will get is, are you serious? Maybe come back in six months and try again. It's good that you phoned ahead because you've saved yourself a drive down to the cinema. You've saved yourself from work by checking to see if there was even any possibility of getting a seat. Now, what might happen is the cinema vendor might say to you, yes, there's a few seats left. And so you'll jump in your car and you'll race down the cinema. But just as you get there, they might say, sorry, those seats are gone, it's been sold out. A bloom filter is equivalent to phoning in advance. That is, there are false positives possible. You might be told that there are seats available at the cinema, but then you find out they are not. However, false negatives are impossible. If the vendor tells you it's sold out, then you've saved yourself a drive. That's what a bloom filter does. It's an attempt to save you effort, if at all possible. Let's now apply that to a partition query. Here is my scott.emp table and some data within it that I was going to use to join to my sales table. As I scan through each of the dates in the emp table, I'll put them through a hash function, which is part of the bloom filter, and that will populate certain bits in the hash array. I then go through the dictionary definition of the partitions for the sales table, that is the partition table. I put those components through the same hash function, which then goes into my bloom filter array. Where I have a match is the beautiful result of a bloom filter. It is telling me that the only partitions I will need to scan in the sales table will be their partition for 2014, 2019, and 2020. That means there are only three partitions to scan rather than the entire table. This is not a guarantee that every single row in the employee table will successfully join to a row in those partitions. As we said, bloom filters are about removing false negatives. Therefore, I can guarantee that I will never have an issue with missing data in partitions one, three, four, and five. I still have to go ahead and do the proper joining work into the employee table, but the benefit I've got was only having to do it with three partitions worth of work. 
Bloom filters are about reducing workload when it comes to doing joins on partition tables. Thanks very much for watching. You can get the entire video series on partitioning from the playlist or just head over to asktom.oracle.com slash partitioning for developers. And don't forget to keep it simply SQL. See you all soon.